What's up and welcome everybody. Carl93 coming right at you once again with another figure review. This time it's for Figma, Saber, Okita Soji, Ascension version. First things first, Figma now does slip covers. Very cool, very premium looking. First look, and Okita Soji's design is pretty basic. Not that this is a bad thing. There's a charm when it comes to a simplistic design. She's your average anime samurai girl with a skimpy kimono. Her face should be familiar. Okita is another non Artoria saber face, albeit with golden eyes and light brown hair. Her kimono has very subtle creasing and wrinkling, giving the illusion that she's actually wearing a cloth kimono. Her arm sleeves and leg pads are layered and also give off the effect that she's actually wearing them as opposed to them being molded in. She also has a long black scarf that's flowing in different directions and it's also removable. Overall, it should come to no one's surprise that GSC recreates an almost perfect figure replication of Okita's in-game animated look. Almost perfect. If I were to be critical, and this is a review, there's a bit of a general inconsistency when it comes to Okita's hair. If you take a look at her card art, it's very subtle but there's a faint pinkish tint on her hair. But then you take a look at her in-game sprite and the pinkish tint is gone. What we got is closer to her in-game sprite, though I would have preferred it if they applied a little bit of pink on her hair. Admittedly, this is more of a nitpick than an actual flaw and can easily be ignored. What can't be ignored is her shoulders. To be blunt, I think the joints are unsightly. From the front, it doesn't look too bad, but when you look at it from the side and especially from the back, that's when the immersion gets broken. To be fair, the scarf does a decent job at hiding the joints, and since this is the Ascension version, there's gonna be an accessory later on that'll fix this visual hiccup. Moving on to articulation, head is on a Figma joint and Okita has no problem looking side to side and even looking up and down. There's a chest swivel, arms can go out, arms can go around, a bit of an elbow swivel, a generous elbow bend, the wrist can swivel, and there's also a hinge. There's a waist swivel, a bit of a pull down at the leg, leg can go forward, leg can go sideways, double jointed knee, there's a light knee swivel, swivel at the ankles, and the feet can hinge. As for her scarf, the flowing parts can swivel, and there's also a hinge. Articulation is very good. It covers the basis you'd expect from a Figma 2.0 body, and thanks to Okita's design, you can pull off natural looking poses, no problem. Let's start accessories with the ones included in both regular and Ascension versions of Figma Okita. We get the standard set of swappable extra hands. We also get the standard Figma stand and the standard Figma bag. Okita starts off with a lightly smiling expression and she also comes with a more battle-ready screaming expression. She wouldn't be a Saber class without a sword, though for this franchise, you can never be too sure. You get her blade, Kashu Kiyomitsu. It comes in two versions, one that's unsheathed and ready for slicing, and the other that's stored in a scabbard. I'm not sure why they don't just give us an actual sheath, so that we can properly stow the sword instead of this fake scabbard, but whatever, it gets the job done. And the final accessory that's included in both versions, Guda Guda's enemy fodder, you get a pair of chibi nobus, one that's gold and one that's silver. They're pretty much miniature statues with no articulation, Regardless, they're still really cute. This next set of accessories are gonna be Ascension version only, and let's start with the biggest accessory, Okita's Hauri. The Hauri adds a literal extra layer of detail. The cloth material feels nice, and it comes in a cool aquamarine color. There's wirings at the end of the Hauri to make it flow naturally. And the best part? It resolves my biggest visual gripe for Figma Okita. Because now that she's wearing the howdy, those hideous shoulder joints are now gone. Aside from the howdy, you also get this comical expression that can be interpreted in a variety of ways. Personally, I like to think of it as a shocked face. And finally, you get Okita's third ascension sword, Kiku Ichimonji Norimune. The sword comes in two versions, one that's stored in a fake scabbard, and one that's unsheathed and ready for slashing. 
and I'm pretty sure she never did this, but you can have Okita dual wield like a certain time hopping purple samurai. A quick size comparison, here's Figma Okita Soji next to SHF Jaku Dragon, SHF Krillin 2.0, Figma Mash or Tenau, Figma Musashi Miyamoto, and finally next to Figma Okita Alter. Okita Soji has remained a fan favorite ever since her in-game debut all the way back in 2015 when FGO was still in its infancy. It's safe to say that fans will be happy to know that this figure does her justice. To be clear, it's not a perfect figure, but it's pretty damn close. I keep harping on the shoulder joints, but that's legit the only major flaw that I can pick out. Now of course, price will always be a factor, and the price for import figures have really gotten crazy in recent years, and since there are two versions of Okita, that's two different price points. Which one should you go with? Well personally, I went with the Ascension version. Her howdy is an essential accessory, and I think she looks better with it than without it. Although I personally think Okita looks best during her stage 1. Regardless, the howdy solves those unsightly shoulder joints, which is, again, my only gripe with the figure. And that's pretty much it. With Okita Soji's arrival, that pretty much concludes the Fate Figmas that suffered delayed in the late 2020s. And if anyone's curious, Figma Okita and Figma Okita Alter are indeed. Okita san, dai